In ancient times, humans had some pretty strange theories about animals, and none of the ethics that would stop us from testing them out. Pliny the Elder, for example, wrote Encyclopedic Naturalis Historia, which collected together much of the knowledge of plants and animals from the time, up until AD 79, when he died in the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which somewhat slowed his output. Of the established truths, he claimed that rhinos and elephants were mortal enemies. This latter belief lasted for centuries and was eventually put to the test by Dom Manuel I, King of Portugal in the 16th century. He was so convinced that Pliny was correct that he arranged to have one of his elephants fight one of his rhinos. But the fight was ruined when the elephant merely ran off. Some of the weirdest beliefs were on display for all to see in the Tower of London. During the reign of King John, the English began very, very slowly to rebrand the famous torture chamber and prison as a zoo. In the early years, the ignorance of the royals and their staff on how to treat animals was something to behold. A gift from King Harkon of Norway in 1252, Henry III didn't really know what to do when he received a polar bear. The bear was kept chained and muzzled for most of the time, but it was allowed into the Thames to swim, which must have been quite a shock for the fish. Before you think that the zookeepers had done one thing vaguely correct, letting it go for a swim was likely done as a cost-saving measure. The upkeep of a polar bear, as you'd expect, is pretty damn expensive. It's one of the many reasons why people prefer to keep cats instead of polar bears. In 1623, King James I was given an elephant by the King of Spain. He wasn't really given any instructions on what to do with it, other than a few very basic and nonsensical dietary requirements. The result was that an herbivorous elephant was fed various cuts of prime beef and a gallon of red wine every day. The King of Spain told James that during the winter months, elephants could only drink wine, which they accepted as fact. For centuries, they kept giving wine to the elephants at the tower without wondering how elephants came by bottles of wine in the wild and apparently lacking the imagination to try offering squash. Lions are not normally found in the wet, dreary environment of England's largest city. And if they were, the English would likely lose their reputation of being polite, sophisticated and well-mannered, as having to deal with lion attacks every few minutes would probably increase their need to swear profusely. Oh my god, there's a lion over there! Despite this, the Tower of London was filled with lions for many years throughout history, and they weren't given that much chance to exercise. The little chance they were given was interfered with by being baited by dogs for the amusement of crowds, which pretty much goes to show that the English reputation for being sophisticated wasn't really deserved in the first place. For some reason, it was also believed that lions could tell when a woman nearby wasn't a virgin, and they became agitated, which isn't such a great thing in a deeply religious and misogynistic society, especially when the lions were basically always agitated because of being baited by dogs. <laughs> Finally, for some reason, it was believed that ostriches could eat metal. We know they look pretty tough, but they're hardly Terminator. And while the elephants were being fed on a diet of prime beef and red wine, the ostriches were being fed nails. Fortunately, and unfortunately, they didn't have to put up with this for very long. You won't be surprised to learn that they died. <laughs>